I certainly have slowed down uh, quite a bit. I, I used to be a little frenetic and doing 20 things at once. And uh, I've toned down the ideas that I farm out to people because I know they're going to see the next email from me is going to have another new idea to get something done. And they're going to say, oh, no, this guy's on to yet another thing. <laughs> so I've, <laughs> I've been trying to <laughs> slow down and, you know, so that people will at least read my emails now <laughs> instead of just deleting them. <laughs> uh, something called scrub typhus, which we had never heard about before, but it's produced by a, a, a little bacteria, which uh, has um, caused more fatalities during the Second World War in the Asia campaign than, than, than did bullets. So uh, a lot of people died and still do die from uh, scrub typhus causes multiple organ failure and in some cases I got uh, chronic encephalitis, uh, uh, meningeal encephalitis, so my brain was affected and uh, what was very interesting is my memory was completely cleared out, like defragging a computer uh, but, and it only very gradually sort of came back and there's still some pretty big blank spots there but it was a very Traumatic, but very interesting experience at the same time, because uh, the way things came back and are still coming back, actually. First of all, when Janaki saw the state I was in, I was literally talking gibberish. I had, I had to relearn to talk and she was very worried. So we contacted a very good friend of ours who's a, a famous physician in Oxford and his colleague is a neurologist. and. The only thing he could say, which was a very positive thing, was that the brain has a remarkable capacity for recovery, even from a traumatic uh, event like a, a serious scrub, uh, scrub typhus. So uh, taking that, uh, you know, in, in, in view, we, well, she helped me get my memory back. She kept uh, putting earphones on me f with music. And music was very good because it would give me a time frame and, and take me back to a certain point in my history. And uh, then pictures, looking at pictures and looking at old uh, books and photographs and stuff of our, hist our family history was very helpful. And things almost automatically started coming back after that. It, at first it was tough though. It was, I, my son... Um, Samir, who is uh, working in England, he was just here visiting recently. When I was recovering from scrub typhus, he came into the, uh, the ICU. I was still in the ICU and I was uh, just recovering, just coming back. And, my, and the doctor was very keen for me to recognize people and to, you know, to, to, to vocalize and verbalize things instead of talking gibberish so that you know, we could, he could prove that I'm coming back, I'm getting out of it, my brain is uh, recovering. So my son walks in and uh, the doctor says, okay, do you recognize this person? Who is it? And I look at him and this is what I apparently said. I said, recycle? He had a t-shirt on which <laughs> said recycle. <laughs> so I was reading and my son wasn't sure to burst out laughing or <laughs> but this is what the doctor tells me later and he said we were in a way it was funny but it was also too ironic to to laugh about so we said okay ah, next time <laughs> i think the next day i recognized him or something. <laughs> it's nothing but my brain that's all i mean the brain doesn't hold things very fast the long-term memory is very intact the short-term memory disappears in minutes. And uh, so I, I, I scribble what has to be done over the next bit or something that I have to work on. So, so right now I'm transcribing it from the notes in my pocket into a notebook on my desk. <laughs> so that's filling up now as well.